Welcome to the Work in Progress podcast. This is a space where we want to create conversations around things that actually matter. We hope these words encourage you to know that no matter where we are in our journeys, we're all still a work in progress. What's up, work in progress, family, season two, episode two, YouTube exclusive. I just said, hey, we probably shouldn't say the episodes. <laughs> and then I said it because right. it was on the top of my mind. Right. What's up, guys? Good to see you. Good to be back. You uh, found us. We're on YouTube only, and you found us still. That's right. Congratulations. Uh, did you guys happen to hit that subscribe button? Ooh. Hit it. They like, hit subscribe. It. Yeah, ding, that helps us out. Ding. That way you're always notified when there's a new video. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> dude, you're a real YouTuber, dude. <laughs> so, brother, let's let's bring this back to yeah. that think tank, we, right? Yeah. If you watched episode one, you know we kind of started this season off a little stronger than we have in the past where we, we got a group of people together and we were like, hey, how can we make this better? How can we build this community and answer questions that young adults want answered? That ha they have these questions and they kind of want the answers to them. You know, they, they want to see um, how they can be living their lives more like Jesus each and every day and the resources to do that, you know? And so one of the questions that got brought up was like, hey man, like, you know, if I have friends or if, if I know somebody or whenever I was in this position, if I didn't have a biblical foundation and I wanted to start that, it was kind of really overwhelming and I didn't yeah. know where to start. I didn't know how to start. Um, and so the topic of biblical foundation and, and starting to get into the word came up. Right. And so I just wanted to dive in deeper on that discussion, yeah. that specific conversation, because it is true, man. Like it's, it's a weird spot to be in. You're like, okay, I think I'm ready for this. Now what, you know, like, yeah. so what, what do you recommend for the biblical foundation? One, I think it's great that somebody is seeking the knowledge of biblical foundation. That's a Woo! great place to be. Hey, like, hey I want to learn more about what the Bible says. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, I think like, you know, just like most things you, when you start out, you can start off like really on fire and like you're super motivated. Yeah. And then you start reading through like Leviticus and you're like, Oh, what? I don't know what like you start like reading through these things and some of it's a little dry because you don't yeah. know how a shirt off connects and like you're just like what I, ah so i think the most important thing is uh understanding your why you want to do that yeah. right and so um i think a lot of times people hop into like i want to have a biblical foundation because they want to like one be able to argue with people using scripture yeah. or two uh they have like a certain topic like hey i want to know about this topic and so i want this biblical foundation uh and so i think the the why the why behind it is important because that's what's going to keep yeah. you actually building on a foundation, right? And we call it a foundation uh, because a foundation is what you start with. That's the bottom layer. And if the foundation is good and strong, then as you build on it, like topical and topics, mm -hmm. um, the foundation's good, right? And so because, like you said, the Bible can be overwhelming, it can be uh, because there's so many things that are interconnected. And actually, I think you get a more beautiful picture of the love story that is the Bible from beginning of end, God's love story to mankind. Uh, you actually yeah. get it better if you have a solid biblical foundation because then you begin to see how things in Genesis connect to Jesus, right? You see how things at the beginning in the Old Testament weave their way all the way through hundreds and hundreds of years to happen in the birth of Jesus or the life of Jesus. Or you see things that are from letters of Paul that have now weaved and connected from the Old Testament to now connecting to now current day issues that we still face, right? And so I think that's the most important thing is the why, like understand why you want biblical foundation, right? To have a more right. cohesive view of scripture, yeah. right? Because then that actually helps you live your life, like, right? Because you have the playbook, cool. right? So yeah, that's, that's the good, first man. thing. That's really good. I think that's important. And dude, that's that's interesting you say that. You know, now you got me thinking, bro. Like, I mean, dude, I knew we were going to do this topic, but now you got my mind rolling. It's like, of course, you need to start with a why, right? Because if you want to be successful in anything, you need to yeah. start with a why, yeah. right? Even, even if it's like health-wise, fitness-wise, I mean, work wise, you know, all of the, yeah. all the things we do in our normal life, we're like, why do I want to do this? Okay, there's my reason now. Let's, you know, do it. And so, why would it be any different with the most important book ever? Yeah. You know what I mean? So, that's good, bro. I like yeah. that you started with that. And that's also helped me because I hadn't thought of that for some reason. Yeah. You know, that's cool. Um, like, why is a really good thing. And it's important for everybody to start that. So, once somebody has their why, how do we, do it? How do we dive in to, to learning this, like this setting this foundation? Yeah. I think like you just said with any other thing in life, like when we have a goal that we want to get to, we make a plan. Mm. I think it's the same thing. I think you need to make a plan. 
right? Because uh, if you're not, you're just setting a lofty goal and then you hop in and you don't finish because that's a challenge, right. like, right? right. Uh, so I think you have to come up with a plan. Uh, and actually, I think there's like three parts to the plan. One, I think you start small. If you've never dove into the Bible, I think you start real small. Yeah. Uh, not necessarily like time, but like, like let's just let's just start small. Mm. Let's not overwhelm ourselves. Uh, so start small. I think then uh, we probably heard of smart goals, right? You yeah. know what smart goals are. I think you set those same things for reading scripture, um, right? And then I think the third piece that's maybe the most important to all of that. Uh, is you invite somebody in for accountability, mm. right? Let somebody know, like, hey, I want to begin to build a biblical foundation. Will you walk with me through this, like through mentorship or discipleship, right? Because then they're going to be able to hold you accountable. Hey, man, are you actually still reading? Are you yeah. still learning? Uh, and then I think the fourth piece, and this wasn't really in my notes, but it's like a extra uh, bonus tip. Yeah, bonus tip uh, is find a resource that helps you, mm. like, right? So we have, uh, we were actually talking about this before the episode about a different yeah. uh, theological course that you can access online. I won't name drop, uh, but we were talking about like how like when you're in it, like you can actually begin to build biblical foundations and principles through their video courses. Yeah. Right. There's so many free courses out there. Like you don't have to go to seminary to like get oh. seminary classes. Like you can literally go on YouTube. Of course, like vet the person who's doing right. it. Like, I mean, don't just yeah. go like anybody and start like <laughs> doing like TikTok theology. That's dangerous. Um, they're like John 360. Yeah. They're like vibing out here and doing all this weird <laughs> stuff. Like the actually go and there's like really good seminaries. <coughs> and they put out like good beginning content. And so mm. I think that's like the extra bonus tip. Yeah. It's like, you don't have to do it alone. And I mean that as in like, yeah, get a partner, like walk with somebody, but also like use a resource, whether that's a commentary yeah. book that's good, man. or using some online. There's so much stuff out there. That's really good. I think if you have a, a, a translation of the Bible or a version of the Bible that has notes in it, that's super helpful to you. But if you don't, and let's say you just have a Bible that you, there's a Bible that's been sitting on your shelf in your house for years, right? And you decide to pick it up. There's no notes or anything. That can be super overwhelming. And sometimes it's even really hard to understand what the words are actually saying. And so having that resource, and I know like for me, and just a little bit of my story, like I didn't really, I've been a Christian my whole life, but up until two, three years ago when we started walking together, I had never walked through the Bible like that. And so you helped me, you discipled me, and you, you kept me accountable. And now I've like, it's not like I'm an expert in it yet. Yeah. I'm trying to be, nobody's probably an expert, but like everybody can learn something continuously from the Bible. But now I'm on this path of like knowing at least the steps that I need to take or want to take because there's no specific or one way to do it, right? Like you find what works for you and you just make sure that you, you get something out of it, you know? And then the accountability yeah. aspect is, is crucial, super yeah. helpful. I think like what you're talking about is, like, you're not going to be an expert in it. But I think, like, you have to reshape your thinking. Like, how many people do you actually know that are experts in anything? Not that many. Uh, if you know experts in some stuff, that's really good. Uh, but, like, even <laughs> when you think about, like, work or, like, right, yeah. like, you're not an expert in your field, even if you're really, really good, there's probably somebody that knows or does better than you do. Right. Uh, and so, like, even, like, for me, like, i a pastor. I work at a church. By no means am I an expert. Uh, and so I have to use resources. Like, yeah. I think – most pastors will tell you, like, we use commentaries and things because those people are much closer to being experts than right. we are. Uh, and so I think there's no shame in that. And so especially if you're just starting out, don't try to do it by yourself. Because, like, like, right, even unless you have, like, degrees and, like, how to even read, like, poetry and, like, different types of literature, because the Bible has several different types of literature in one book. That's a whole different episode. Right. Uh, right? But everything gets read differently. Mm -hmm. Like, you have to, have to understand the culture. So if you're not a history person you don't actually understand the culture and things that are going on in that time yeah. that it was written. So there's so many different things to the Bible that makes it so unique. Uh, there's so many things to the Bible that make it so intricate that if you try to go at it by yourself, not to be mean, but you're going to probably fail or not get all that you could get. Yeah. Out that's, of it. that's a good way to put it. You're probably not going to receive it for the fullest, yeah. you know, of what it, what it's meant to give you. And yeah, man. And it's kind of like, <laughs> if you, if you think you can read the Bible without any help, then that's, I mean, maybe you should look internally for something <laughs> uh, there. You know what I'm yeah, saying? But <laughs> yeah, that's not a not a good headspace to be in for sure. Uh, but yeah, man, that's awesome. And so, let's let's go over some practical things. Like, how would you suggest that somebody do that? Like, is there anything that you know off the top of your head or resources yeah. that you use? Or um, I think first finding a mentor or somebody to walk with you in that. Yeah. Uh, and honestly, like different people start at different places. 
Hmm. I mean, I don't know how he will actually like start Genesis one. We're gonna read Genesis one and work through. Uh, some people like you, like have a book that they like to start with. Cool. Uh, like so, for me, I like to start people in the book of James um, because it's like just a super. It's a super short read, and so you get some accomplishment in that. Like yeah, as somebody sure. who's just now starting to read the Bible, right? Like you read a, a few chapters, yeah, and you finish the whole book. That's cool. Uh, but also, like it's so packed with like practical things that you can take and apply right now into your life. I love James so much that I actually named my son's middle name is James. And that's literally because that's my wife and I's favorite book in the Bible. That's awesome. Shout out to James, brother of Jesus. He didn't even know I named my son after him. Uh, but like, and so I think like that's the important thing about being with a mentor is like, everybody's going to approach it yeah. differently, but that doesn't mean there's like one right or wrong way. Mm-hmm. I think it's just having a plan and staying consistent. Yeah. It's like anything else in your life. Like if you have this goal and you don't plan and you don't stay consistent, you are never going to reach that goal. Yeah. And so if the goal is biblical understanding, like a biblical foundation, uh, you got to plan and you got to have yeah, somebody to walk with you. Absolutely, dude. That's really, that's the, yeah, honestly, from me, that would probably be the best advice I could give as well. Because without the help of you who's more seasoned in this, I wouldn't have known what it started where to start. And I probably wouldn't have started, you know, like you just keep kicking the can down the road. Oh yeah. It's Um, overwhelming. Like, right. Like, yeah, there's a lot, like, I mean, there's a lot in scripture that's overwhelming. Yeah. Like, yeah, I a hundred percent. And dude, we started in James, bro. You took me down your playbook, man. That's right. And it worked because James is awesome. James is a great, is a great book. Uh, I was actually talking to a student, I think the other day, like last week. And uh, he was talking about somebody with his discipleship and his mentorship. Mm -hmm. And they're starting in Proverbs because he is about to, be done with youth and move into. And so his discipleship guy was like, why don't we begin to like add some wisdom right, to your tool belt? And that's so like, cool. they're like walking through Proverbs together. And so like, there's not like, there's not really a right or wrong way. Yeah. It's just like beginning the practice of building habits. The more you build habits, the more you're going to continue to add things into your biblical foundation yeah. that you're then able to build upon, which is the, the goal. Like, right. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, like we, you probably hear this a lot in church of like, um, right. Well, the answers are all right there in scripture. Mm-hmm. That's true. Uh, but if <laughs> yeah. you don't have a foundation, then you're just like, okay, great. This is a thousand pages. Like, where do I start? Uh, and so I think that's, what's so important is like the, why having the motivation to do it, having the steps, the, the guardrails to do it. Um, that's huge because yeah, you're going to have to answer, right? Like you're going to have to be able to defend your faith. You're going to have to be able to answer things about culture topics. Like you're going to have to be yeah. able to do that stuff. And if there's no foundation there, you're just going to be like, being like a TikTok theologian, like where you're just picking stuff out of and context and out of yeah. things that don't actually make sense. And so, and that's the, it's crazy that you say that. Cause that's actually, I remember growing up being in, you know, in high school and I didn't know the Bible very well, like at all. Right. And I don't know, I don't know why I never dove into it. And bro, I remember like getting would be, I'd be getting challenged on it. And I'm like, dude, I have no answers. Yeah. Like, and it's not even the fact that I wanted to prove anybody right, but I was just like, dude, I am not equipped yeah. with my own faith. You know, like how I felt like ashamed of that, you know? And so I'm still working on it, but like, at least now I have a, a very solid foundation of why I believe what I believe yeah. and who, you know, I believe in. So it's really cool, man. Yeah, it's uh, it's essential. I think the more that you actually do it too, like the more you want to do it, like right at the beginning, as you begin to like, walk through different passages of scripture or you like begin to actually walk through books and chunks of the Bible, you're like, Oh, I, I, I love this. Like yeah. I am learning so much. Like I'm growing so much yeah. that you want to keep going. And so, yeah, I think that the big key is like, man, just like take the first step, take the first step yep. and then take the next step and then the next step and the next step. And you'll, I mean, not that it's going to happen overnight, but like you do those simple things to start, you know, maybe it is 10 minutes a day where you're like, or 15 minutes where you're watching a video and mm-hmm. like you're walking through scripture using somebody's content. And before you know it, you're going to be look back and be like, man, yeah. I think the crazy thing is, and you've experienced this too, like you don't really think like, do I really have like a biblical foundation? And then something happens in your life, whether it's to you or somebody that you're walking, mm-hmm. you know, in like community with. And you're like, you know what? There's like actually a place in scripture. And it yeah. just comes to mind because mm-hmm. you begin to build that foundation where it's in it's in here, like, right. And hopefully in here and, and you're beginning to actually live out the stuff mm-hmm. that you're learning and digesting. I think that's the cool moment. That's the light bulb moment. Um, it happens with like you, it happens with other people that, you know, you see 
And it uh, doesn't happen overnight, but it does happen. Yeah. So, like, if you stay consistent, if you stay on a plan, if you stay in close proximity and partnership with somebody yeah. who's discipling you, like, it'll happen. Yeah, I agree. And you'll look back and be like, whoa, the foundation was built. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you just add to it. You just keep going. Yeah, so, it's really cool. Yeah. That that relation, that relation That foundation goes hand in hand with your relationship. And as you get better, then your relationship will improve. It's like that yeah. triangle, you know, like. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome, man. For um, sure. Last question. Yeah. What are you currently doing right now um, to help keep your biblical foundation yeah. solid? You know? uh, currently, I, uh, I like to start the new year by rereading a gospel. Uh, and so what I'm doing right now is actually rereading uh, the gospel of John uh, because actually uh, we're going to be spending some time <clears throat> in John with our youth group. And so like I want to just kind of retouch and reframe, but I'm actually doing that um, – alongside some content uh, that I'm looking through, like, cool. different lenses. And so yeah. uh, I'm using, like, content side by side. So I'm using, like, my quiet time in the morning, and I'm reading through the Gospel of John, and I'm doing, like, the SOAP method, which I think we talked about in Season 1. Yeah. Like, right, and I'm doing that, and I'm, like, I'm you're rediscovering some of these things, and you're, like, you're like regaining this, like, view of who Jesus is. And then I'm watching some content later on in the day uh, using an online platform, and uh, it kind of just goes partnered. And so... I always love like restarting the year. I know people, sometimes people do like, I'm gonna read the whole Bible in a month. I'm gonna do like a shred. I'm gonna do all these things. Mm. And like, that's not bad. It's just for me, I like the rhythm of starting with the gospel because uh, it's Jesus. And and so every year for the past like three years, I've started the new year just rereading a gospel. And I really don't have like a, it may take me a month. It may take me two and a half weeks. You know, I just like to go slow and steady. And it's amazing how every time you do it, you find something new. You're like, yeah. oh, whoa. That's uh, cool, man. And so that's where I'm at so far. Um, yeah, what about, what about you? Where are you starting this new year with your biblical foundation? That's cool, man. Um, I, I've been watching some content as well on like business practical practices and how to interweave my faith into that. And so, uh, I've been starting a Genesis one because I've been listening to a, a gentleman who is very well versed in biblical foundation, biblical knowledge, and he just pulls so much wisdom and so many yeah. like practical principles out of Genesis one. And he's like, this is what he always says. He's like, I started learning the Bible better when I started reading. I started treating it like a school zone instead of like a highway. Right. Mm-hmm. That's how I read, you know, so slow and steady, slow man. and steady instead of just trying to get through the, yeah. the checklist, you know? And so that's what I've been trying to do. And so I've been Genesis one right now, Genesis yeah. reading from the beginning. And I've never actually done that before. So it's cool. I'm that's excited good. for it. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I'm interested to see, man, maybe what, if you're out there listening and you've got like a rhythm, like start the new year with, or maybe you're just like, Hey, I'm just recycling. Like I'm restarting, I'm redoing, I'm building a foundation. Or maybe you're somebody who's like, man, I disciple a lot of people mm. and this is where I start. Uh, man, like let us know, like comment or message us or whatever. Uh, yeah. We love to hear just, you know, multiple ways in which you're connecting with scripture and how yeah. you're building your own biblical foundation. And if you're like listening and you're like, uh, well, I want that. I don't know who to start with. Reach out to us. Like we, like I said, uh, we want to see you in person. We don't want this just to be like a one-sided conversation. Yeah, please. We want you to reach out. If you're like, man, I'm I'm not even in the Austin area, we can find somewhere for you to connect. Cool. Like I guarantee it. And so don't let the screen stop you from reaching out and yeah. uh, being a part of this biblical foundation building. Uh, you'll be glad you did. And honestly, like you'll be glad you did. Uh, your future spouse mm. or current spouse mm. will be glad you did. Your future kids. As you become parents, we'll be glad you did, right? And so it's just like one of those things that as you begin to build, like it's just going to reap benefits and benefits for your generation and generations to come. So, yeah, exactly, yeah. man. Yeah, so let us know ex- what you're reading this yeah. year in, in the Scripture, in the Where Bible. Where are you starting? Where, Where are you, you starting? starting at? Yep. Uh, okay, so let's wrap up this episode with our creative corner. We're still in the corner. If you were with us hey. last week, we're still in the corner. Uh, so I started last week, so if you want to go ahead and start, who's your creative? Uh-oh. I, I may have named him already last year season it's season one it's all brand new but it's all good man because this guy has been really dude this guy is so good i met him at the lecrae concert photographer come on um dude this guy is blowing up he's made videos for the rock for steph curry for pj tucker is his most recent one shoes and he's doing a shoe video pj tucker yeah so yeah. he does he does come just on. highly cinematic highly engaging videos uh but then he does strictly like steph curry's shoes or the rock shoes and Dude, this guy is so talented, and he reps Jesus, man. Like, he's got up. a one one six tattoo. He's he's all about 
all about the Lord. That's man. What's up. So it's cool. To yeah, see it's good. People like that on the big big stage. You Check know. out his socials. I'm sure it's great work. Karsten. Karsten one one six. That's his name on IG. Karsten one one six. Check him out. Uh, we didn't plan this. I'm actually gonna, not one one six, but I am going to go the rap route. Hey. Uh, I got a artist that was blowing up on TikTok uh, toward the end of 2023. Um, I've actually been listening to him fairly regularly. His name's Schema Boy. Schema Boy. Uh, and I love, <laughs> dude, I love him, man. He's good. And awesome, uh, the bro. thing I love most about his, like, when you go look at his bio, he's like, this ain't rap, this is worship. Hey, uh, and cool. I love it that's because cool. it's like, man, yeah, worship doesn't have to necessarily be like on a Sunday morning while you're in church, like, right? Mm. Your craft is your worship, yeah. right? So he's a rapper nice. and his rap is his worship. And so cool. I love it. So go check him out. Right you probably on. recognize a couple songs. If you're like on socials, you'll hear some that are probably trending. Uh, so go check him out. All of it's really good. It's high energy, a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, go check him out. Schema boy. Nice. All right, guys, like and subscribe the do it the channel. Ding. Like we said, we're only on YouTube. So share it. Let us know what you think. Leave us any comments about what you want to hear next. That's and right. See you next time. Yeah. See you next. Episode three. Later. <laughs>